Hi, welcome to Lyme Dental Practice, and I'm Mick Williams, and I'm going to talk to you today about biodenting and does it really do what it says on the tin? Biodenting was launched by Septodon back in 2010 as the first and only dentine in the capsule. It can be used wherever dentine has been damaged as a dentine replacement. So my aims and objectives of talking to you today is to introduce myself and why biodentine, present the results of my own in-house audit and study into biodentine, also explain the indications and uses of where we've used this new type of material, demonstrate that biodentine can be used easily by all GDPs, and show you some examples of cases that I think are relevant to us as general dental practitioners. Admissions, okay, I have not received payment from Septodon for using their materials, but I have been paid by Septodon to talk about biodentine in lectures and also for my time today. I have received some trial samples of materials from them. Who is Nick Williams, BDS? Well, I qualified out of Birmingham in the UK in 1996. I've been a GDP now for 17 years. I've been in practice here at Lime Tree Dental Practice in Portishead for 10 years. Um, I'm also a primary dental care clinical teaching fellow at the University of Bristol. And also I'm a member of the University of Birmingham uh, prep panel, which is a product research and evaluation in practice panel. My history of biodentine, well, probably like you, I, in the summer of 2010, I'd seen lots of adverts for biodentine and I was very skeptical uh, about the claims they were making. Went to a seminar uh, with the prep panel in October 2010 up in Birmingham uh, on the science and initial research that Septodont were doing into biodentine. I was more convinced well, it was worth giving it a try because if it does say what it if it does do what it says on the tin, then it really has the potential to change the, our approach to some teeth. So I started using material uh, in October and November 2010, and since then in the practice we've completed approximately 100 cases where it's been used. So what do we do with it? Looking at these slides here, you see a tooth that was causing some pain and discomfort on biting and also sensitivity to hot and cold. The x-ray shows a deep filling overlying the pulp. In this case we remove the filling and you can see the secondary dentine in the deep pulpal areas. And then we place our dentine directly into the cavity, allow it to set, remove the rubber dam and then the patient returned a few weeks later, now pain free, when we place the composite directly over and we took the post operative radiograph to show the presence of the biodentine directly over the pulp chamber. So, all my initial thoughts of biodentine, like a lot of new products, you've got to be thoughtful of how they are to mix and handle. And it was a very unpredictable to mix initially. Sometimes it was too dry, sometimes it was too runny. It's unusual to handle, that's for sure. And its properties change as it's setting. And so that takes some getting used to it. And it takes 12 minutes to set. But it works. It does what it says on the tin. It's all about the patient in this case. If we can keep that pulp alive, the tooth will definitely last longer and it's got to be worth a try. <clears throat> it saves patients money because it hopefully prevents them the, the, the intrusive treatment of RCT. And it saves us money in that case because we haven't got to pay for all the disposable items that we use during RCT in this day and age. So I wanted to find out how successful it had been in my own practice before I started talking to people about biodenting. So we did a retrospective audit of biodenting in cases that we'd completed here at Lime Tree Dental Practice. I wanted to assess the outcomes of these teeth. So we reviewed the records of all teeth where biodenting had been used between December 2010 and August 2012. And over that 18 months, we treated 70 teeth 55 molars, 12 premolars, two incisors, and one deciduous molar in patients age ranging between 7 and 77. That would just so happen to be the group of patients it was used in. 43 of these teeth were given symptoms from a sensitivity to and a niggle up to reversible pulpitis, and at least 49 of these teeth, caries was noted either at the exam or on the x ray. We used it in a wide variety of uh, clinical indications, as you can see from this slide. So we used it like this, in deep cavities, indirect pulp capping. Existing deep fillings were removed, close to, showing the cavities close to the pulp, 
Biodent was placed into the cavity and using the two-stage process, the biodenting was set, the patient returns to the second appointment and then we prepare the tooth and a composite is placed over the biodenting, leaving the biodenting in the deep areas. Direct pulp caps, small exposures where we've got deep fillings already very close to the pulp or with previous exposures underneath them, we would remove the existing core place the biodentine directly onto the popular exposures and then in this case as you can see from this slide we placed a crown directly over the top very successfully and 18 months later the patient is very very happy. Large exposures ordinarily we'd be moving forward to RCT however in patients like this where they have a very large cavities is a new patient coming with decay into the pulpal areas sensitivity to hot and cold and to biting. However, the radio, radiograph shows there's no apical pathology and the tooth was vital to cold. So it's worth a try. We clean out the cavity, we place the biodentin directly into the cavity, the patient returns a week later, no more pain. We then put a composite directly over the tooth and seven months later, there's the images on the screen for you to see. Very successful results. In all but one case we've done in the study, they were all uh, two-stage delayed restoration. However, there was one case, this one we're showing you now, of trauma where we chose to use a single-stage all-in-one approach. This young lad had broken his teeth in a scooter accident. We decided to place some biodentine over the blushing pulps. There was no direct exposure of the pulps, however, we could see the pulps through a very layer, very thin layer of dentin. Biodentin was placed as a lining, which we allowed to set for 20 minutes before then edging the enamel and bonding uh, and rebuilding with composites. The stepmother and the patient were extremely pleased with the results and they returned nine months later to show us the result and then the whole family were very pleased. So what were the findings of the res our results and our audit? We analysed the results first of all back in October 2012. There were 70 teeth in the study. Seven of those teeth had not returned. 63 teeth were therefore reviewed. And the time from the biodentin to the last appointment of those 63 teeth varied between three days and 23 months. The average review period as a result was nine months. Three of those teeth were RCT'd very soon after the biodentine and one tooth was extracted very soon after the biodentine. So four out of 63 teeth, the biodentine didn't achieve what we wanted it to. However, that means 59 out of 63 teeth, we had great success. However, let's explore those four failures. One of the teeth was extracted at the patient's request. Why? Well, I think the, the truth be known, is the tooth really needed RCT. We tried to explore this um, sclerose pulp. We were unable to access the root canals. And so we chose to place the biodentine in the cavity to try and settle the tooth down. It was ambitious. However, it was an alternative to extraction. However, the patient returned within a few days, as you'd expect, and the tooth was extracted. One of the teeth that moved on to RCT, the cavity was a very, very deep distal cavity in class two scenario. We've cleaned out the cavity. Can we be absolutely sure that tooth was fully vital at the time that it was giving pain um, and that we decided to give biodentine a go? However, unfortunately, the patient returned in pain and we moved forward then to an RCT. So, in the four failures, was biodentine the wrong option? I would suggest, yes, it probably was. RCT or XLA or extraction would have been a better option in these four cases. But we've included them in the, in the study to give you the absolute truth of the cases we've completed here at the practice. However, we've gone on now, subsequent to that, six months later to reanalyze the data with patients coming back for their six monthly checkups, we want to find out what's happening since. How, has anything changed? Well, the average re review period now of those 63 teeth has gone up to 14 months. 
One, one extra tooth has been extracted. That was extracted after nine months. And one tooth has been RCT'd because the patient had continued ache and sensitivity. That was RCT'd after 12 months. However, one extra patient has returned that was previously lost to recall. And that after 12 months, that tooth has been very successful. So our success rate is now running at 58 teeth out of 64 teeth where biodentin has done exactly as we wanted it to. In addition to that, two teeth, we've had some composite or oh, cuspal fractures and they've needed repairing, um, but no problems with the biodentin. No teeth have we had separation of composite from the biodentin, which confirms with what Septodon um, tell us that the bond strength between the composite and the biodentin is similar to that between uh, composite and glass armor, which is a system that we've all used for many times before. One patient has reported continued mild sensitivity and going back to the post-operative pain side of things, several of the exposed pulps gave considerable post-op pain for up to 10 days. So post-op pain on exposures can last for a while. However, many of the indirect pulp caps or small exposures um, reported no post-operative pain at all. So the conclusions of my audit, biodentin works very effectively on deep and large cavities, indirect or direct pulp caps, if, and a big if, the tooth is definitely vital before placement. Teeth that have pulpal symptoms as far as early transition from reversible to irreversible pulpitis have resolution of the symptoms following biodentin. However, if the tooth has definitely got irreversible pulpitis, I would always advocate moving forward to uh, endodontics or extraction. Biodentin is a suitable core or base material for cranes or composites. And in fact, the opacity and colour of the biodentin can enhance the composites uh, aesthetics as well. As we'll see in this slide here, another delayed restoration, some other examples, very large deep cavity, intersecondary dentine, existing temporary filling with a new patient, clean out the cavity, clean out the caries, place a biodentine directly into the cavity, patient returns two weeks later, the biodentine was then trimmed back and prepared and the direct composite was placed over that tooth and the patient was very happy. So what do I tell my patients? Well, we do put an awful lot of information on, the, on their estimate when they sign for consent for their treatment. And here it is here, you can see on the slide, we've suggested that we fill this tooth with a new filling material called biodentine. This material is being used because the cavity is very deep and therefore the nerve may be or about to be affected by it. Biodentine promotes healing of the nerve to help it lay down natural denting within the nerve to protect itself in the future and try to keep the nerve alive. The outer coating of the biodentin will need to be covered in the future, two days or six months later, with a permanent cover, either a filling or a crime, to protect it. This treatment is designed to try and reduce the chance of this tooth needing a root filling. If, however, the tooth needs a root filling during the, due to the original cavity within two years, we will offset the cost of the biodentin against the ongoing cost. The tooth is likely to be sore for several days while the nerve settles. Some hints and tips. Well, yes, as with all things these days, Biodentine has its own app. The Biodentine app is here. It can be downloaded from the Septon website. Um, this has different mixing instructions and indications of use and also clinical recommendations. It's got in there some really good hints and tips on how you can make your mix more consistent to, if it's too dry or too runny, ways of overcoming that very quickly. Um, it is a new type of material. It does need a new way of handling um, and getting used to. Also, other hints and tips, because of its different um, handling and uh, setting properties, um, we need to have very good matrix systems. So the only matrix from UltraDent or the V3 wing system from OptiDent, I find are very useful in these cases. Well, in conclusion, biodentine, can it do what it says on the tin? Yes. It can be unpredictable in mixing. It can be tricky to handle. However, if you do give it a try, it works. It's all about the patience, and it, I believe, can keep those pops alive. Thank you very much for listening. 
If you look at the slide, there is some reference points where you can get information about my team, either from Septon or from my own practice website at Laundry Dental Practice. Thank you very much.